Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem. What is a locus problem? We're basically looking for a set of points or complex numbers that satisfy this equation. Actually all the numbers we are interested in finding. So we have the absolute value of z squared minus 1 equals 1. This is a very common type of equation. I'll show you some graphs, some general formulas. We'll talk about some very interesting stuff. Are you ready? Let's dive in. So to be able to solve this equation, I can go ahead and replace z with a plus bi because it's the name of this channel, right? But wait a minute. Since this is a locus problem, instead let's use x plus yi. So don't be offended a plus bi, we're also going to use you in a different problem. Okay? So if you do that replacement, you're going to get something like this inside the absolute value symbol, x squared minus y squared minus 1. I put the real parts together for you, so you don't have to do it, plus 2xyi. 2xyi comes from the 2ab when you square x plus yi. All right? This is the absolute value and that equals 1. Now let's go ahead and use the definition of absolute value. It's going to be the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. If you hear some noise, I apologize. I think those are the sprinkl uh, sprinklers in the background. I hope it's not too loud. Now, we can go ahead and actually square both sides to get rid of the radical and kind of like get a nicer equation. From here, we're going to get the x squared minus y squared minus 1 squared plus, let's expand this, 4x squared y squared, and the whole thing is equal to 1. Do you like it? Very many people don't like this because this looks confusing. But don't worry, we're going to put this in a really nice form that you can always use. And before I get into that form, I want to show you I want to show you the picture of something. But before I show you the picture, I just want to give you the formula. How about that? So this actually is an interesting equation that we express in Cartesian coordinate system, but we can also express in polar because, come on, we're talking about complex numbers, right? So in the polar form in general, this is expressed as r squared equals a squared cosine 2 theta. Do you know what it looks like? Okay, I'll show you how we can transform our equation to this form and then we'll take a look at the graph. Okay, now to be able to put our equation in this form requires a lot of algebraic work, but it's not that hard. First of all, I'm going to use the formula for cosine 2 theta, which is double angle. Okay, do you remember that formula? The general one is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. All right. Now, if you go ahead and distribute this, it's going to be cool, but you don't have to. I mean, you can do or not. doesn't matter. No big deal. But um, it's totally up to you, by the way. But here's what I'd like to get at. First of all, we got to remember what, what are some of the basic components of the polar coordinate system, right? So here's what it looks like. We have this coordinate system, but instead of expressing points as x comma y like with two coordinates, we want to express them as a point in the coordinate system, right? Obviously, we want to connect it to the origin and then worry about the distance from zero, which we are gonna, we're going to call r, which is also called the modulus for complex numbers. And we're, we're, we're going to be concerned with the angle that this vector thing makes, right? Which is going to be theta in this case. So the question is then, how do you go from the xy system to the r theta system? And here's the formulas that you need. If you kind of drop a perpendicular and being in the first quadrant makes things a little bit more intuitive or maybe easy to understand. But this is going to be my x and this is going to be my y coordinate. And if you think about the trigonometric formulas, this is a right triangle. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. You're going to get the following equations, right? X equals, x equals r 
cosine theta because cosine theta is x over r. Look at that. This is x. The r is the hypotenuse. Y is going to be r sine theta. And from here, we get other things like the Pythagorean theorem tells us, okay, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. One more equation that's going to be very helpful for you is the y over x is equal to tangent theta. This is a good question. Is y over x always tangent theta in any quadrant? And then can you always say theta is arctangent of y over x? Those are good questions. I just want you to think about them. But this is pretty much the packaging for our conversion. Let's go ahead and use that to convert. All right. So we have r squared equals a squared times cosine squared minus sine squared. Here's what I'd like to do. I have r cosine and r sine, but here I don't have the r on the right hand side. Such a pity, right? Let's go ahead and do this. Multiply by r squared. Of course, that implies that we multiply the left hand side as well. And that just gives us r to the fourth. No big deal. But inside, we get something super cool. And by the way, I can express this as r squared squared, which is actually going to be more helpful. r cosine is x. So r squared cosine squared is going to be x squared, and this is going to be y squared. How nice. But that's not the only thing we need to do. We also need to change r squared. What is r squared? r squared is x squared plus y squared. And yay, we were able to convert our polar to Cartesian. Such a nice word, right? That comes from Descartes. Awesome. Now, this is my Cartesian equation, which is coming from here. Now, our goal is going to be to convert our equation to that one, which is easier, right? Let's go ahead and do it now. So, how do I turn this into that? So, in order to be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and work with my equation. What is my equation? x squared minus y squared minus 1 squared plus 4x squared y squared equals 1. Let's go ahead and work it out. I'm going to square a plus b plus c. You know, there's a formula. Uh, which is the 2ab, 2ac, 2bc. You hopefully know how that works. And then we're going to get this. And then plus 4 times that equals 1. Nice thing, 1 cancels out. We really needed that. And now we have x to the 4th, right? And then plus y to the 4th. These two are like terms. They like each other, plus 2x squared, y squared. And these two terms I'm going to put on the right-hand side because everything will be awesome after that okay so now look at the left hand side what do you see you see a perfect square right awesome and on the right hand side you see this now i want you to compare this equation to this equation let me copy that right here so you can make a better comparison you know is hopefully you can compare them right away and of course this is supposed to be squared do you see that okay from here a squared equals 2 and we got our equation and of course you can always go back to polar form and then just graph it polarly whatever and this will become a more uh, concrete equation right more specific values so that's our polar but how do you think I found this obviously I work with the equation but before that I did something else let me show you okay first of all this is my graph, and by the way, this is called a lemniscate, and I believe there's a special name for it, but it's just a lemniscate for now. And what I did was, I was kind of graphing both of these things, right? And of course, the second one comes with a parameter, so which I have to put a ruler, and you can play with this in Desmos, which, which is a lot of fun. And I noticed that when I bring the A value close to 1.4, the graphs almost coincided. I'm like, where does 1.4 come from? This is before I worked with the equations. And then I realized, aha, uh -huh, a squared equals 2 implies a is equal to square root of 2, which is actually pretty close to 1.4. And then this is when I got the same graph. Because notice, even though we have this color, we don't have any graphs because they coincide, right? And this brings us to a blank page, which means brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye